Oh boy, Stone, ticker symbol STNE, just dropped another 40% in price after reporting earnings. Its market cap is now just under $6 billion. I guess you could say their stock price is dropping like a rock. It was actually pretty hard for me to deliver that joke while staying stone-faced. The jokes on this channel have just hit rock bottom. Hey, wait. So in this episode, I want to talk about Stone's stock price and their most recent earnings report to see whether or not the best stock ever just got even better. Let's start with the stock price. One of my favorite sayings in investing is when in doubt, zoom out. Here's the entire price history for Stone since it IPO'd in October of 2018 at $24 per share or around a $9 billion market cap. That number is important because that's around the price at which Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway bought 11% of the company. Berkshire spent $340 million to buy 14 million shares of Stone stock back in 2018. At the start of this quarter, Berkshire Hathaway still has about 10.7 million of those shares. So Warren Buffett hasn't sold out of Stone stock even through its 60% drop from $92 per share in February to $36 at the start of this quarter. The 3 million or so shares that he did sell were sold during the first quarter of this year for probably north of 70 bucks each, which is around three times what Warren Buffett bought them for. This strategy is called buy low, sell high. So will Warren Buffett sell stone stock this coming quarter or will he buy it now that it's cheaper than when he bought it three years ago? All kidding aside, I don't actually know. I'm right there with you. But we can turn to another great investor who holds Stone stock and posts their trades daily instead of quarterly. Let's pull up ARK Invest's holdings in Stone stock on Kathy's ARK. I'm actually in the middle of revamping my own ARK Invest dashboards, and I'll have a pretty exciting update on that for you pretty soon. Kathy Wood holds Stone stock in ARK F, ARK Invest's fund themed around fintech innovation. Here's every purchase of Stone shares that Kathy Wood has ever made. She first bought 233,000 shares of Stone stock on May 4th, 2021. On that date, Stone stock closed at $64 per share. She bought the dip in May, July, twice in August, twice in September, and of course, the huge dip this past week. So that's the situation we investors are in right now. This is a fintech company in an emerging market, a company that Warren Buffett owns over 7% of that's currently cheaper than what he bought it for and much bigger than when he bought it. Kathy Wood has also been loading up on this stock at much higher prices than it is today. That's the whole reason I made an episode about Stone stock in the first place. I thought it was one of the best stocks to buy now at $36 a share, and just in case it needs to be said, I obviously think the opportunity is twice as good at half the price. If you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. But let me point out two things about my episode on Stone stock before I get into their earnings. First, here's what I said near the end of that episode. Speaking of the stock, it's climbed over 20% in the last four trading days, marking at least a temporary reversal from its steep downward trend over the last eight months. Can it go lower again? Absolutely. 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 When I made that episode, Stone stock was on a serious downtrend, and I thought I was pretty clear that that downtrend could continue. Absolutely. Second, that episode is only one month old as in less than 30 trading days. I actually had to double check this just to make sure after all the comments I've been receiving. Guys, I've eaten pizzas older than that. Grad school is pretty rough. Listen, if you're measuring your time horizon in days instead of years, you're a stock trader, not an investor. I don't mean that as any sort of insult. That's just not what my channel is about. This channel focuses on long-term investing in advanced technologies that could take years to mature and penetrate their target markets if the companies building them can make it happen at all. It's not a channel meant for the faint of heart or paper of hand. If that's you, thank you for your time and for your stone shares. As for the rest of us, Stone reported their quarter three earnings on November 16th and the stock crashed by over 33%. So let's turn to their most recent earnings report and see what they're up to and update our long-term investment thesis accordingly. Stone is a one-stop shop that provides small and medium-sized businesses in Brazil the fintech solutions they need to move away from cash and join the digital economy. They have two types of solutions. Their financial solutions include payment processing and point-of-sale devices, as well as financial services like business loans and credit lines. That makes up about 70% of their total revenue. The other 30% comes from business software solutions, which they're integrating together with Lynx, a financial software company that they acquired late last year. Let's take a look at their growth. 
MSMB stands for micro merchants, small and medium sized businesses, and TPV stands for total payment volume. So the total payment volume of their small and medium sized businesses is up about 70% year over year, and it's up almost 2300% for micro merchants. That's over 80% total payment volume growth year over year. If you look at their two year compound annual growth rate, it's at 61%, which is the highest it's been since they could start reporting that number since they've only been on the market for three years. If we look at the total number of accounts instead of the transaction volume, they've doubled their client base over the last year. They've added over 27% more new small and medium sized businesses last quarter than they did the same quarter a year ago, and over seven times as many more micro merchants. Said another way, their rate of growth is increasing year over year, not just the growth itself. Their financial engagement is also increasing. Their banking client base has 4X'd in the last year. Their total accounts balance has more than 3X'd in the last year. In fact, no matter how you look at their financial services, like banking and credit lines, they're all growing by hundreds of percentage points year over year, just like I showed you in my deep dive on the company last month. There are a lot of important financial platform highlights in this presentation. Stone is investing in a credit platform for small and medium sized businesses this quarter. I'm excited to learn more about that and this insurance solution that's going to collect additional fees with no underwriting risk. And of course, we need to keep an eye out on their partially and fully collateralized loan products since that's a big reason their stock has been dropping in the first place. I'll come back to that in a little bit. When it comes to fintech companies, one thing we really care about is keeping customer acquisition costs under control because this is one of their competitive edges over big banks. Big banks have big buildings with high costs and run expensive marketing campaigns that include lots of paper mailers. Those costs get divided among the customers that they acquire. So it's great to see that Stone is keeping their customer acquisition costs under control. They're up just 1% year over year for small and medium sized businesses and down by 17% for micro merchants. Not only that, but they're better at monetizing each client that they do acquire. Average revenue per user is up by 3% for SMBs and a whopping almost 250% for micro merchants. More clients times more revenue per client is how Stone is achieving exponential growth on the financial services side. Stone's financial software side is looking pretty good as well, especially considering how recent their acquisition of Lynx is. Consolidated software revenue grew by 27% compared to their individual software revenues last year before Stone made this acquisition. Stone's point of sale and enterprise resource planning software revenues have almost tripled year over year, while Lynx's recurring revenues are up about 15% year over year. So one thing we want to see as investors is more improvements on the Lynx side of things as Stone continues to integrate this new acquisition into their core business. That's fine, it's still the early innings for this acquisition. There are a lot of features that Stone wants to implement across a wide variety of e-commerce verticals like beauty, pet care, apparel, and gas. This presentation is full of slides where Stone covers each individual aspect of their business, how it impacts their clients, and exactly what their strategy is moving forward. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, and if you're interested in this stock, I can't recommend it enough. Okay, let's dig into their financials. Total payment volume is up over 50% year over year when you exclude their Corona voucher program. Like the pandemic itself, we want to see this part of their business get smaller and smaller over time and the company be more and more successful without it. So this is great to see. Just like total payment volume, total revenue is up over 50% year over year. One of the big reasons I think that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway invested so aggressively in Stone is because they're the biggest merchant acquirer in Brazil besides big banks. A merchant acquirer is a financial institution that maintains a merchant's account, enabling them to accept credit cards and settle credit transactions on their behalf. During the first wave of their pandemic, when people started to handle more transactions digitally instead of with cash, 51% of Brazilian e-commerce volume went through Stone's platform. That's what caused their market share to spike. Now Stone is continuing to gain more and more market share without their Corona voucher program. This is real, stable, non-pandemic related growth, and it's accelerating. Okay, before I cover why this stock is dropping like a rock, comment below or tweet me at ticker symbol U with your thoughts on Stone's latest quarterly report. If you caught my previous episode on Stone, has anything I've said so far meaningfully changed your investment thesis on the company? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. 
And if you haven't checked out my deep dive on stone, but you like what you're seeing so far, I encourage you to check it out because I cover what the company actually does in way more detail. I'll leave a link to that episode in the top right hand corner of your screen right now and in the description below as well. Okay, so here are the few things causing Stone's stock price to drop like, you get it. First up, Stone bought a 5% stake in Banco Inter, so they could bring the bank's customers onto their platform. Brazil's economy is currently struggling, and Banco Inter stock has tanked, so the fair value adjustment of these shares went down, way down. In my understanding, this value adjustment shows up like a loss to Stone, just like Stone stock is showing up as a loss in our portfolio. It's unrealized. Stone isn't selling Banco Inter stock for a discount. They're just updating what the stock is worth compared to what they paid. This is by far the biggest loss on their income statement. Second, if we look at their adjusted free cash flow, we can see that their prepayment cash needs are still very high. This is because of Stone's new credit and loan solutions, which over relied on Brazil's new collateral registry system, which is something I talked about in my previous deep dive. Basically, merchants have to put up a certain amount of collateral to get a business loan or a credit line. That collateral is registered with one of a few registries in Brazil. So this registry isn't something that Stone built, it's a new collateral system that they have to integrate with and keep up with as it changes. Due to a malfunction in these registries, merchants could put up collateral with Stone, then go somewhere else to apply for another loan and use that same collateral, because these registries don't talk to each other. So one thing that Stone is doing to protect themselves is put up more cash to the side for these non-performing loans. While this isn't Stone's fault, it's definitely Stone's problem, and as investors, we need to see them fix it, either by finding a way to rely less on Brazil's faulty collateral registries, or by cutting their credit products altogether. This is something I'm watching out for in Mercado Libre's future reports as well, because Mercado Libre also reported a high amount of non-performing loans. Third, they're aggressively reinvesting in their future growth through mergers, acquisitions, and other investing activities. In my opinion, this is a good thing because this is what high growth companies do in general and how Stone is positioning itself to keep claiming more and more of their Brazilian market share specifically. Still, I definitely hope these activities work out better than their stake in Banco Inter, at least on paper. We have yet to see how their actual relationship with the bank works out in practice. The fourth and final thing actually hit me pretty close to home. Well, my home specifically. As it turns out, on October 26th, U.S. federal investigators raided a Florida office of Pax Global Technologies, a Chinese provider of point-of-sale devices used by millions of businesses and retailers, including Pax Seguro and Stone. The FBI began investigating Pax after a major U.S. payment processor started asking questions about unusual network packets originating from Pax's payment terminals. Pax has since issued a statement saying that the network traffic is due to the optional geolocation feature that's available on Pax terminals, and that the use of dynamic IP addresses is commonly used for geolocation just like in a smartphone. This FBI raid is what spurred Viceroy Research to take a short position and release a massive, whopping, one-page short report the next day. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know what I always say about these kinds of short reports. The better the timing, the worse the report. This is also what spurred the investigation into Stone by Brager, Eagle, and Squire. BES is a stockholder rights law firm and is investigating potential claims against Stone on behalf of stockholders to make sure they didn't do anything unlawful when the stock dropped because that would be bad for shareholders. I actually think that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. But ironically, the news of this investigation appears to be putting more downward pressure on the stock than it is helping Stone's shareholders. Here are all the investigations that BES would like to remind investors of and encourage them to contact the firm. So it looks like this firm does this literally all the time with every stock ever. In my opinion, the only issues that actually concern me is with Stone's integration with Brazil's collateral registry and the money that they're investing in their future growth. Those are the real issues that are materially damaging their balance sheet today, and we want to make sure that the benefits outweigh the costs in the future. When I say future, I mean a couple of years from now, not a couple weeks from now. I like what I saw in their most recent earnings report. I'm excited to see if Warren Buffett buys back in, holds his existing shares, or sells some more, and I'm happily joining Kathy Wood in buying this dip myself. Whether or not you buy the stock, I hope this episode cleared up what's going on with Stone after their most recent earnings call, as well as with all of the drama going on on the side. 
If it did, and your hands aren't made of paper, consider investing in the like button and subscribing to the channel with all notifications turned on. That's a great way to let me know how much you like my jokes, as well as invest in the channel that invests in you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.